This is the story of Air France Flight 054. But not just any Air France flight, but the one operated by the venerable Concorde. The inspiration for this video came from the video Real Engineering did on the Concorde, where he briefly mentions this incident. And with me being the nerd that I am, I needed to dig up all the information that I could possibly know. And that's how this video got made. Before we go any further though, dropping a like or comment really helps with the algorithm. So it would mean a lot to me if you could do that. Now, the Concorde is known for basically two things. It's raw speed and the one major accident that it had in France. Now, along with that major accident, the Concorde had multiple other minor accidents. I covered one of them on the channel years ago when the channel was a fraction of what it is right now. The interesting thing about this accident is that this could have very well saved the Concorde that crashed in almost 20 years after this incident. Before we get started, let me just tell you that this video is based on a French report, well, written in French, and I had to use Google Translate. So if there are any inaccuracies, yell at me in the comments. You know what? Yell at me anyway. It really helps with the algorithm. On the 14th of June, 1979, a Concorde was on its way from Mexico City to Paris with a stopover in Washington's Dulles Airport. The stopover in Dulles was quite fast, and the plane was taxiing to its departure runway of runway 19 left. Now, fun fact, on most taxis, the Concorde burned through two tons or 4,000 pounds of fuel on its taxi. That is absolutely insane. With the plane on the runway, the brakes were released at 7.29 p.m. and 33 seconds. The afterburners of the Concorde kicked in, starting the Concorde's climb to its supersonic cruising speed. Just 36 seconds after the brakes were released, the pilots hit 166 knots. Just three seconds after that, two explosions rocked the Concorde. Three seconds after the explosions, the temperature alarms on the left main landing gear were triggered, and an overweight warning was also triggered in the cockpit. But the first officer who was in control of the plane felt the plane lurch towards the left, but it was manageable. But despite this, the pilots had to take off from the runway as they were going too fast to reject the takeoff. In the cabin of the plane, a passenger sitting in seat 23A saw that something that they did not expect to see, the wing of the Concorde breaking apart. As soon as they saw that, they went up to the cabin crew member and said, I saw the wing which burst. Unknown to them at the time, that was the tire punching clean through the wing of the Concorde. So, 46 seconds after the takeoff run was started, the pilots took the stricken Concorde into the skies of Washington, not knowing what was wrong with their bird. As the Concorde climbed away from the runway, the pilots scanned their instruments to try and figure out what had caused the explosion. Their instruments were all in the green, but ATC had some bad news for them. Their left-hand tires had blown out and the engines were on fire. For those of you that know the history of the Concorde, this should set off a few alarm bells. The final report for this accident had some beautiful yet haunting images of the plane in question taking off, and I'll throw them up on screen right now. You can clearly see the fuel streaming out from the left-hand side of the airplane, but the pilots had no idea how badly their plane was damaged, and they needed to know that before they could land the stricken plane. So they decided to do a low pass over the tower so that the controllers could assess the damage to the plane. The controllers could see that tires 5 and 6 of the Concorde had been destroyed. In the cockpit, the pilots were having trouble with the gear. When they commanded the gear to retract, the doors actuated, but the gears would not go up into the plane. The gear status indicator stayed green, indicating that they were still down. At this time, the pilots were still debating on whether or not they could push on to Paris, but they decided against it as it would be easier to troubleshoot the problem if things were to get worse if they were around Washington. Unknown to the crew at the time, the problem would indeed get worse. ATC then came on and told the crew that their plane was leaking fuel from the left-hand side of the plane. Yeah, there was no way that this plane was making its way across the Atlantic with burst tires and a plane that leaked fuel like a sieve. But oh wait, it gets worse. When they receive the news of the fuel leak, one of their hydraulic lines, the green one, starts to give out. Now the hydraulic line powers some very important things on the Concorde. You know, things like the main flight controls. Losing those would be absolutely disastrous. So the crew immediately got to turning over the flight controls from the green line to the yellow line, so that in the event of a failure, they would still have some basic controls over the plane. But at 7.45 p.m., the yellow hydraulic line started to give out. The pilots needed to put this plane down the first chance that they got. They had no idea how much longer the plane would hold out. The nearest airport that they could realistically land at was Baltimore, 
but they did not have the brakes on the left-hand side of the plane, and it was crippled in other ways. So, hoping to get a longer runway, they turned back to Washington Dulles. On their way back, the pilots opened up the fuel dump valves and let out 12 tons of fuel in six and a half minutes. That's 30 kilos or 60 pounds of fuel being thrown overboard every single second. That's like throwing one teenager overboard every second. With that, the pilots were ready to land this plane. The plane lined up with runway 19 right. Their target speed for this landing was 178 knots and the plane weighed 144 tons. The Concorde touched down and the pilots braked as hard as they dared, calling up emergency brakes when they started to run out of runway. The Concorde finally came to stop just 300 meters or 980 feet from the end of the runway. As soon as they stopped, the firefighters poured foam on the gears to prevent a fire from erupting from all the fuel that was leaking. Then, once everything was safe, the passengers were deplaned and taken to a lounge. All of them were safe. Air France Flight 054 had made it back and everyone on board was safe. Once on the ground, the investigators could finally take a look at the plane to figure out what the facts were. To everyone's relief, they came to the conclusion that despite the massive fuel leak, there was no fire as ATC had suggested. This was a good thing as the next time this happened in 2000, there was a fire and that story ended drastically differently to this one. The plane wasn't the only thing that gave investigators their first clue as to what had gone wrong on flight 054. You see, when they scoured the runway, they found bits and pieces of tires. But what was really interesting was the marks left by the tires. The marks left by tire number six had a slight bend to it in some places. And in other places, one tire left two parallel marks on the runway. This meant that there was only one explanation as to what had happened. This supersonic jet had taken off with a deflated tire. By the time the plane had gone through the first 4,500 feet of runway, the tire had already started disintegrating. The failure of the number six tire on the left-hand side put more pressure on the number five tire, causing it to fail as well. But how do you go from a simple tire failure to the full-blown crisis that this crew had? Well, in this case, and in another one, the failure of the tire sent shards of rubber flying in all directions. Some of that rubber was flung outward and impinged on the underside of the plane where the fuel tanks were, causing massive leaks. The parts of the tire not only damaged the fuel tank, but they also broke the hydraulic pipes that ferried hydraulic fluid to various parts of the plane. This is why the green hydraulic line failed and the yellow one lost pressure. Hallelujah for redundancy, I guess. The damage on this plane was localized to the left wing, but it was severe. Like the list of things broken on this plane was seriously long. Like the hydraulic lines were fully cut in multiple places. And all of this due to one tire that was flat. The investigators couldn't really figure out why the tire was flat in the first place. In the wake of this accident, they decided to make a few changes to prevent something like this from ever happening again. For example, they added additional scrutiny on the tires before each takeoff, meaning that the chances of another Concord taking off without adequate pressure in one of the tires would be reduced dramatically. Also, the crew were given better training on what to do if the gear on the Concord was jammed. Air France, the airline, also decided to increase the tire inflation pressure going forward, and they also amended the taxi procedures to put less strain on the tires. The manufacturer also decided to put gauges in the cockpit that would tell the pilots if the tires were deflated. One of the recommendations for this crash really stood out to me. It calls for the improvement and cleaning of taxiways and runways. If you're an aviation geek like me, all this while, while you've been watching this video, you've probably been thinking about the similarities between this incident and Air France Flight 4590, the Concorde that caught fire while taking off from Paris on the 25th of July, 2000. On both occasions, both Concords lost a tire on takeoff. The fuel tanks of both planes were punctured by the resulting debris. But Flight 054 did not catch on fire, but Flight 4590 did. The reason for that was the amount of fuel that was leaking and its position. In the case of Flight 054, the fuel leak was at 4 kilos per second or about 8 pounds per second. In the case of Flight 4590, that number was way higher at 60 kilograms per second, or about 120 pounds per second. When they were wrapping up the investigation of Air France Flight 054, no one expected a fuel leak 
that large to the point where 60 kilograms of fuel was being dumped overboard in one second. But the investigators of Flight 054 did ask the question, what was the possibility of the fire? I mean, any time you have a fuel leak, there was the possibility of a fire. In the end, they came to the conclusion that the possibility of a fire was very, very low. This is because any fuel from a leak would be funneled away from the plane by the airstream, and the ignition sources downwind of the leak would not be hot enough to set the fuel on fire. But that came with one small important caveat. They did mention that a rupture in fuel tanks 5 or 8 could cause fuel to accumulate in the landing year well, and if there were an electrical short circuit of some kind over there, it could start a fire. This was found out in 1979 or thereabouts, 21 years before Flight 4590 would take off from Paris. Guess what happened in Flight 4590? The number 5 tank was ruptured and the fuel was set on fire due to a short circuit from a bit of wiring destroyed by a disintegrating tire. The one possibility that they had identified as a slight possibility came to pass, and that brought down a supersonic passenger jet. I can't help but think that had this incident been a bit more serious, then they may have put into place changes that may have saved Flight 4590. Now, don't get me wrong, I am absolutely happy that everyone on board walked away from this incident, but there's still that what if, you know? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to watch more mini air crash investigation Concord content, I have a video about a Concord whose tail disintegrated. You can find the link to that on your screen right now. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.